The story begins with our protagonist Yuan getting ready for a journey. He arrives at the airport excited and fantasizes about enjoying his vacation. Like everyone else, he goes to the boarding area, however, he unknowingly enters a portal and finds himself in another world where magic and fantasy creatures exist. He's happy that he has been summoned into another world and would soon begin living a life of luxury as seen in light novels. Shortly after, a man invites him to take the entrance exam to determine his magic potential, so he goes there full of himself, expecting to shatter the magic stone like most isekai protagonists. However, when he places his hands on the stone, it glows with white light and he is excited. Everyone laughs because a white light means that he has no magical affinity at all. With the help of a microscope, the examiners notice a very faint green light which is a sign of wood magic. They tell him to come back later when his magic is visible to the ordinary eyes. As he wallows in self-pity, an old man offers to employ him as a gardener, since he has a slight wooden affinity. Afterward, he begins his life as a gardener, whose magic can only grow little flowers. One day, he hears sounds in the forest, he goes to spy, and finds some people flirting. They quickly notice him, so he begins running, however, they can use magic, so they catch and humiliate him. At night, he complains to the man he works for, so he tells him the only way to gain power is to find fairies. He reveals he once tried and was able to acquire a fairy seed, although he was unable to grow it. He hands it to him and tells him to try his luck. Yuan notices a seal on it and shows the man. However, he is the only one that can read the Chinese character written on it. He tries growing the seed by using different methods for days but is unsuccessful. He suddenly gets an idea to try using his blood. He wanders in the forest again, only to find the same group flirting. This time, the lady bites one of the boys and reveals herself to be a vampire. The other boys get angry and attack her, but she counters the attack and captures the second boy too. Yuan runs for his life, but she manages to catch up to him. She captures and stabs him in the chest. Flowers begin growing from his injury. The flowers bloom beautifully and reveal a lady in the center. She approaches him intending to take his life. However, he is already dead. The vampire appears to claim her price. However, the fairy has other ideas. She slashes the vampire with a special move that will exchange her vitality with that of her master. He wakes up with delight that his fairy finally awakened. However, she tells him she only saved him to kill him herself. She starts striking him, but the damages come back to her. The moment is interrupted by a woman who introduces herself as her the Dean of Shoyu Academy. She hands him a book called The Fairy Guide, which he uses to seal the fairy. Later, she explains that fairies disappeared overnight in their continent and the guide is the only thing left about them. Yuan wants the book so she proposes that in exchange, he has to come to her academy and be her student and help her find a vampire hiding in the school. At night, another fairy in the book named Yezi begins speaking. Yezi tells him the origins and details of fairies. She explains that he is too weak to summon any fairy, so she transfers into his smartphone for convenience. Yuan arrives at the academy, however, the students don't give him a warm welcome. They try to humiliate him again by giving him a test crystal. This time, it glows brightly with two magical attributes. He immediately uses the opportunity to ask a girl out, but she gets flustered and runs away. He seeks an explanation from Yezi who explains that he has gained the attributes of the vampire and fairies. In addition, he has the ability to charm people. During a training drill, Yuan can't keep up with all the running, however. The teacher and the other students are doing just fine. A jealous student proposes a duel with Yuan. Although he refuses, the teacher won't have it so they prepare to battle. At that moment, Princess and Kai arrives at the scene to spectate the fight. The fight begins with the student sending a wind spell toward Yuan, however, he has a barrier. His fairy called Mofei tells him to let her out so he can kill the student but Yuan doesn't like the idea. So he uses his wood attribute to defeat the student but collapses afterwards. When he wakes up, he finds himself in another world. He finds a girl who is dying and cares for her. Some men appear, saying they plan to sell her into slavery but he doesn't let them. He tries running away but is beaten severely. He protects the girl by shielding her. Once he discovers the girl is a human Mofei, he wakes up back in the real world. Yezi tells him he just entered the fairy world. She reveals that Mofei won't attack him anymore. He contacts her, only to discover she still has a mean attitude towards him. Some students enter the clinic so he hides. They turn out to be vampires feeding on another patient. Mofei talks to scared Yuan through his phone. She tells him she can regain her strength by feeding on vampires. At home, as he prepares instant ramen, he notices someone approaching the room. He thinks it must be the vampires so he hides for his life. He manages to assault the intruder who turns out to be Princess and Kai, who was sleepwalking. 
He notices she was not followed so he lays her on the bed and sleeps off. She wakes up in a cozy position with Yon, so she loses her temper and calls him a shameless perv. He curbs her anger by offering her ramen which she takes a liking to. They quickly hide after noticing some intruders. The vampires search the entire room, but they are unable to find Yuan. He then uses his vines to bind them and escapes with the princess. He makes her go in opposite directions and lures the vampires to himself. He awakens Mo Fei who attacks the vampires on his behalf. She completely overwhelms the vampires with her strength but before she can deal the finishing blow, their master arrives at the scene. He kills them instantly. Yezi informs Yuan that their master is a level 8 knight who would be difficult for Mo Fei to defeat in her current state. As the battle continues in the knight's favor, Yuan asks Yezi for help. She explains that he can either boost Mo Fei's power by bonding with her, or he can rebuild the fairy world. However, he doesn't have enough magic energy to enter the fairy world. The princess cuts and reveals she can transfer her energy to him, so he bribes her with a year's worth of ramen. As she transfers her energy, the knights release an attack along Yuan's way. However, Mo Fei shields it with her body. Yuan appears in the fairy world along with Yezi. Here, they find Mo Fei who is working as a hitman. She cannot see or touch them. He stalks her only to find her talking with a man who looks like him. She watches the man called Zhao play his strings for the children in the street. However, he is confronted by some rascals who beat him up for trying to protect the children. As Mo Fei watches, she remembers being saved by him in the past, so she comes to his aid. As thanks, Zhao gives her his sword. She accepts it and offers to come to his aid if need be. Yuan is annoyed by watching them. He explains that his look-alike, Zhao is very cunning and most have planned the entire situation to make Mo Fei fall for him like in his game. Back in the present, Yuan is unconscious and Mo Fei continues to battle the knights in exhaustion. As a last resort, she defends Yuan by trapping the knight with her blood. As he rants at Zhao, he reveals that he can see him. He asks Yuan what he is going to do with Mo Fei the game hero. However, Yuan tells him he doesn't consider Mo Fei a game character. Zhao goes to Mo Fei's house but is attacked by her instead. She explains that no one ever visits her. Zhao entices her with gifts and Yuan can only watch in frustration. The next day, they go on a date together. Zhao explains that he is an explorer. He tells her of the different places he has been to and his favorite being a house surrounded by flowers. The next day, after killing a man, she finds him waiting for her so she hides her sword from him. At home, he cooks and treats her nicely while Yuan watches. Yuan notices the scenarios are happening like the game he was working on before being transported. Mo Fei takes an assassination job to raise money to flee with her new lover. Her boss warns her that Zhao might be dangerous, but she doesn't listen. She purchases tickets and hands them to him. Zhao tells her they would meet up three days later by the lighthouse. Three days later, she packs her things to leave. She encounters some rascals but they are surprised she lets them live. At the lighthouse, Mo Fei waits and waits for Zhao but he doesn't show up. Yuan watched in frustration as she waited for three days and nights. The next morning, her boss comes to tell her that she has fallen into a trap. The place is bombed, however, Mo Fei fights her way down. The enemies tell her to surrender by taking a little girl hostage but she defeats all of them alone. She saves the girl, however, she is stabbed. Zhao reveals himself as the mastermind of the entire incident. As she is captured, Mo Fei relives her memories and tears. The leader of the gang decides to kill her, however, Zhao doesn't like the idea so he fights off the remainder of the gang using his fairies. Mo Fei manages to get on her feet to drag him to death together with her, but he is protected by his fairies. She keeps attacking until her swords break and she doesn't have any strength left. The man doesn't let her die. He offers her a contract where she will become an all-powerful fairy. She accepts the contract and is turned into a fairy. Yuan attacks Zhao for being cruel to Mo Fei but he explains he is simply playing a game to evolve the characters. He explains that they are the same person, and he is trying to make his dream of ruling another world a reality. Zhao disappears, leaving Yuan behind. Yuan tries to release her by stabbing himself to make the flowers bloom. Yezi tries to discourage him but he doesn't listen. He climbs up and gives Mo Fei a goodbye kiss, he lets go and lands on the sword. When Mo Fei wakes up, she realizes that Yuan and Zhao are not the same people. She weeps that Yuan died for her, however, it turns out that he is still alive. She demands an explanation so he explains the situation in the real world. Together they open a portal back to the present where the princess has exhausted her spiritual energy. Now, Yuan and Mo Fei are able to merge to awaken their fairy form. With this new power, they confront the knight on even terms in a fierce battle. Yuan seems to be enjoying his newfound power, but Yezi reminds him to wrap things up quickly. The two fighters use their ultimate attacks however, Yuan comes out victorious. After the battle, the dean hands him two fairy seeds as a reward. She asks that he keeps what happened a secret. The next day, Yuan's exhaustion from the battle is visible in class. The teacher introduces two transfer students who turn out to be Mo Fei and Princess and Kai. 
They both sit with Yuan, so he gains the admiration of all the guys in class. He runs away from the mob who chase him for stealing all the beautiful girls. He finds himself in the library. Here, he asks the librarian for the magic to grow magical seeds. She hands him two scrolls stating they are what he can handle at his level. At night, he tries to use the scroll but Yezi tells him it is going to be ineffective. She tells him not to worry, as she has eaten a plant encyclopedia and gained the ability to grow the seeds. With her help, they discover the way to grow the seeds, however, he simply tosses them into the lake and waits. He waits for days but nothing happens. The knight reports to his master who is pissed that he failed to carry out his plan. He calms down after being informed about the existence of fairies. He orders the knight to obtain the fairy by killing its master. Later, the fairy seed finally transforms magically into a white-haired fairy. Mo Fei is distressed by the condition of her awakening. The fairy suddenly gains consciousness and immediately tries to attack Yuan calling him a fake. The moment is interrupted by the blooming of another fairy seed. The arrival of the second fairy makes the other fairy stop being hostile so they accept Yuan as their master. Yuan names them Lotus Frost and Yuexian and summons them into the guide. The next day, the principal informs him that the rogue knight is leading some knights of the Orphe Empire to attack the princess and also claim his fairies. She orders him to leave the academy with the princess. As they journey, he notices that Yuexian and Lotus have gone ahead to a lake. He and Kai rush in excitement to take a dip but they run into a dragon. The dragon moves to capture the cute fairies for himself so he attacks Yuan. After the dragon introduces himself as Giorgio's, Yuan challenges it to a duel. He traps it with his vine, forcing it to surrender. Yuan asks that he drop some money since he lost so it flies off leaving behind a whistle. Later, he books a room in the lake's resort for his companions. Later, Lotus is still hostile toward him. She tells him she awakened with an unknown sense of hatred towards him. Yuan notes that she has amnesia, so he tells her to relax in the lake. However, she starts losing control and attacks him. She ends up taking the damage instead. The knights suddenly appear, wanting to steal the fairies. Yuan uses the whistle to call for Giorgio's, instead of fighting for him. He joins forces with the knights in hopes that they save a fairy for him. The fairies confront the knights in a three-on-three -three battle, while Yuan is chased by the dragon. His vines do not work this time so Giorgio's forces him into the lake. Inside, he is able to capture him using a new spell. He then notices a seal at the button of the lake. As the seal reacts with Yuan, Mo Fei rushes to aid him, leaving behind the two fairies to be outnumbered. They try to hold off the knights until Mo Fei comes back to defend them. At the same time, the knight ambushes Nkai who is asleep. Yuan wakes up to find Zhao again. He informs Yuan that a new game has started. He sees Lotus Frost who is still a human. She offers to treat his injury, however, she overdoes it. She tells him her name is Lion. Yuan is told that he is inside the fairy world of her memories. So, he has to follow her and discover her memories so he can go back to the real world. Zhao then finds a baby dragon and asks him to spy on Lion. He reports that Lion picks flowers for a living. Furthermore, she is trying to find a way to cure her sick sister. Zhao tries to get close to her as he did with Mo Fei. He offers to help her look for herbs that can cure her sister in a cave. Inside, they are attacked by a giant tiger. Despite the danger, she goes ahead to pick the herb. The roof starts collapsing, so Yuan rushes to save her, however, Zhao teleports to her rescue, leaving him to face the tiger alone. Lion leads Zhao out of the cave but the tiger chases after them. They arrive at a cliff with nowhere to escape, so Lion moves to protect them with a stick. As she attacks the beast, it tries to stomp her, but she is saved in time. Zhao goes back to confront the monster who he defeats with ease. He learns that it was the baby dragon who made the beast awaken. Knowing what it did, it begins begging for its life. It is forgiven but is tossed down the cliff to search for more herbs. Later, sobs because the herbs didn't cure her sister. Zhao reveals that he knows a cure. He tells her it is called the purity of the three incarnations. The next day, Zhao proposes to Lion, but she leaves without saying how she felt. She didn't respond because she only wanted to care for her sister. At home, she cares for her sister who is Lotus Frost and is is very weak. She tells her that Zhao told her a prescription but it is still incomplete. The next day, Lion heads out to find more herbs. She finds evil Zhao sleeping by the lake waiting for her. He then takes her on a ride in a boat. Yuan is present but she can't see him. As they ride, she reveals that this was the lake where her sister saved her from drowning. As a result, she developed an illness. The next day at the lake, he reveals he has found the complete prescription. He explains that it is the blood of the patient's relatives that is needed. However, it is going to be in large quantities so it is too dangerous. At the present, the knight is unable to attack the princess because of a protection spell done by Yuan. She wakes up and hugs him not knowing he is a betrayer. Outside, Mo Fei continues to battle the other knights but she is unable to protect her fellow fairies. The princess arrives with the knight, 
However, he attacks the fairies and reveals that the other knights are his allies. Back in the fairy world, Lion hangs out with Zhao. However, Lotus Frost watches her in anger because she told her she was going to get herbs for her. Lion explains to Zhao that she is tired of taking care of her sister and wants a life of her own. She blames herself for what happened on the lake but she has accepted that her sister's disease is incurable. Lotus on hearing this breaks down in tears. At night, Lion gives her medicine with added poison, however, she is aware and drinks it anyway. As Lion prepares her meal, she takes a knife to kill her but hesitates. Lion who already noticed tells her to go ahead, and so she forces her hands. Lion tells Lotus Frost to take her to the lake so her blood can be used to cure her. At the lake, Zhao reveals to Lotus that Lion made her hate her so she would be able to sacrifice herself for her. However, Lotus doesn't want this, she takes the body inside the lake. Here, she prays to God that he makes them sisters in the next life in exchange. She offers her life. Zhao offers to grant her wish by turning them into fairies. Witnessing this again angers Yuan who tells his evil self to stop toying with people's lives. Yuan attacks him but is countered and beaten up. He reminds Yuan that Mo Fei is still fighting for him in reality while he is stuck in the fairy world. Yuan finds himself playing the main character from the beginning again. This time, he is visible to Lion. He relives all the events like his evil self Zhao did until the point where she sobs about her sister's disease. He tells her about the purity of three incarnations. However, he goes ahead to tell Lotus that the last ingredient needed for the drug is Lion's blood. After listening to him, Lotus assures him that she won't let Lion hurt herself for her. Later, he is invited to dinner by the two sisters. During the meal, Yuan and Lion suddenly collapse. Yuan later wakes up to find the room empty. He rushes to the lake where he finds the sisters going down the lake again. He is disappointed that his actions didn't change anything, so he pleads that Zhao gives him another chance. He accepts and sends him to the beginning again. He wakes up and relives the entire story again, together with Lion. This time, he stops the sisters from dragging the knife before anyone got hurt. He's able to explain that they need not sacrifice each other to be happy. The sisters reconcile happily so Yuan leaves them to go outside. Here, he meets with his evil self, Zhao who congratulates him on his success. He tells him his entire efforts may not affect the present, However, Fairy Lotus appears to tell him it isn't true. Together, they open a portal where he is to be transported back into reality, along with the baby dragon. The dragon comes out of the water with Yuan in tow. He quickly lets the princess on its back for safety. After, he confronts the knights along with their leader. As the battle begins again, Lotus fuses with Yuan to awaken another fairy. With his new form, he attacks the knight. He realizes that this form with Lotus allows him to control water. As the knight attacks, he freezes him in his steps. He goes ahead to save Yuexian from another enemy by freezing him. He also helps Mo Fei defeat the second knight by drowning him. At the same time, the last knight is trying to capture the dragon. Yuan comes to his aid and punches the robber so hard that he spits out blood. He continues with a barrage of punches until he falls into the lake. The leader knight breaks free, unleashing an intense aura. Yuan sees that he is prepared to use an ultimate move so he calls Mo Fei to fuse with him too. His new form is so majestic and intense that the knight almost pisses himself. However, he summons courage and attacks. Yuan entertains himself by battling him. He tries different attacks with his newfound power and watches as the knight tries so hard to counter them. Finally, the knight goes down, Yuan prepares a finishing move for him but is stopped by the princess. So he sends his attack to the sky and unmerges with his fairies. The princess puts an end to the fight, however, the knight goes his way. The lake begins blooming with flowers and Lotus reveals that she is merging with the lake to atone for her sins. Yuexian then goes back to the guide and Mo Fei follows suit shortly after leaving Yuan and the princess to travel together on the dragon. And this brings the anime to an end. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on another video. Until next time, take care.